Good morning. It's very good to welcome you to St Mary's Hitchin to join us in worship today. And although we're now able to meet in person at 9.30 on a Sunday morning, it's great that you're able to join us through uh, this video. So thank you for joining us. You're very welcome as part of the St Mary's family. If you'd like to know more about the church, please do look at our church website, which gives you details of our service. Uh, the website address is on your screen now. And if you'd like to donate for the work of this church, which has continued throughout the pandemic and will continue in the future, please can you uh, look at our donation portal on the website and give generously. Thank you. A reading from St Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship, 
or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, For your sake we are being killed all day long. We are counted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. The Gospel for Sunday the 26th of July is from Matthew chapter 13. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down and put the good into baskets but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. This is the Gospel of the Lord. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. I looked up on the web rules for the best investments, how to invest wisely. Do you want to know what they were? They uh, might help you with your personal finances. The first was avoid investments with surrender charges. The second was be cautious of investments with limited marketability. The third, avoid investments that need high upfront commissions. Fourth, avoid confusing investments. And the fifth, don't put all your money in the same type of investments. And if you don't get anything from these sermons, hopefully I will have helped you with your personal finances. 
These rules seem to me to be diametrically opposed to what Jesus is trying to teach us about the kingdom of God in these parables and in the gospel. Let's look at them a bit more closely. Avoid investments with surrender charges. That's the uh, personal finance wisdom. Basically, avoid penalty charges that limit your flexibility. And yet, we are called to deny ourselves, surrender all, take up our cross. Flexibility isn't key, but costly discipleship is. The way of Christ will not be easy for anyone truly committed to it. You cannot, after all, be a half Christian, just as you cannot be half pregnant. The second rule was, avoid investments with limited marketability, i.e. go with things that are liquid and popular. How does that fit in with the call to be salt in the world, to stand up for truth and justice, to not follow the crowd and take the easiest and most popular paths? The third was avoid investments with upfront commission. Well, that's because, of course, your advisor, once the commissions are paid and they have their cut, then they have no incentive to look after your investment. But how does that fit in with the Christian gospel? How does that fit in with the God whose whole history with humankind is about faithfulness, covenant, promise, whose Son, through his Spirit, promises to be with us to the end of the age. The fourth uh, bit of investment advice was avoid confusing investments. How does that fit in with so much in the gospel? With the logic of the kingdom where the smallest seed has the best potential. Where we find our lives by losing them. Where we see the human face of God in a Nazarene peasant who gives himself to us in bread and wine. The king who is a servant. Nothing confusing there, is there? And of course, that final bit of investment advice, don't put all your money in the same type of investments. Diversity is key, they tell us. Have a split of bonds and shares, different sectors, different markets. Hedge, cover your risk. How does that fit with the God who gives abundantly and fully to us in Christ, who emptied himself of his divinity to take on human flesh and to serve, and who does not hold back and calls us likewise to give all of ourselves in his service and in service to one another. What is clear, I think, is that the logic of a sound investment and the logic of the kingdom are different, very different. Jesus wants us to think a little more, a little more deeply about searching, finding, celebrating and selling all in order to possess something of great value, real value. It's a very different logic 
from a sound investment. It involves huge risk, is not diversified, is not easy to get out of, does not derive value from popular appeal, is costly. Jesus wants us to appreciate something that is hidden, not loud and showy to go out of our way to search for it, to dig deep, to find it, to celebrate that encounter such that it fill, fills us with great joy. Such great joy that we can take a risk, put all our eggs in one basket, so to speak, for something worth infinitely more, the kingdom of heaven. Friends, as you seek him, may you find him in church, in the world, in the Eucharist, in one another. May that encounter bring you deep joy. May it spur you to commitment, to taking risks, to new challenges outside your comfort zones with a faithful God ever beside you. Amen.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray for our world, especially for places battling COVID with limited medical resources. We pray for our nation, for those places where COVID rates are high and people are anxious. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our community, for Hitchin, for children who are on their summer holidays, for families who are beginning to go away, for those who are at home, for rest and for recreation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the church, for the parish of Hitchin, for all those who have been married in the last few weeks and will get married in the next few weeks. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who struggle in body, mind or spirit, for those who are battling mental health conditions, for those who are battling terminal illness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for all those who have departed this life, for those who have died recently and those whom we remember at this time. We commend them to you, Heavenly Father, that they may rest in peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so we join our prayers into one as we Pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Yeah.